Hey guys, what's up? Calder here with Dial H. Today we're gonna to be talking about a huge WizKids announcement that they posted on their website today. It's about Modern Age Rotation and all this new Silver Age news. They're ramping up, as they say, the Silver Age circuit on the road to Worlds. Now, we know that there are going to be states tournaments that are going to be Silver Age, but they mention any potential other tournaments as well, so we'll have to see what that looks like in the future. Now, all this information, we'll have a link in the description below so you can read the article for yourself, but we're just going to go ahead and go over each point in the article. First up, they're going to do some bands. I'm a big fan of a lot of these changes and erratas that they have to the Silver Age figures, so let's go ahead and jump into it. First up is the Scarab Chase from Wonder Woman. They basically say he's too much of a potent force in modern age right now. There are too many ways to cover his downsides and enhance his upsides. People use the whole copying equipment effect with, you know, the radioactive clay and everything so that we can mind control across the map. That gets past this whole only deals one damage. There are way too many loopholes in Scarab. So they were like, we're gonna flat out ban him for right now. And typically, they've even removed stuff off the ban list for Silver as it ebbs and flows. So we're gonna have to see how the game evolves as Silver Age continues on this year, and there's gonna be a lot more Silver Age tournaments to look at data. So it's really cool. I didn't really like playing against Scarab. I think he led to a very turtley play style. You know, you're just hiding back all the way in your starting area, shooting at me. That's not really a fun way to play Hero Clicks, in my opinion. Next up, we have Batman, the, excuse me, the JLU Prime on blue microphone Batman. He's very much similar to Scarab. You can sit all the way back in your starting area. He doesn't have the crazy ignores line of fire that like radioactive clay and everything can give. But Batman can just literally see everything in the entire map, right? As long as there's like, I think just ignored hindering terrain and that was it. So if it was a pretty empty map, WWE Arena is a popular Silver Age map. He could see everybody and he could target everyone on your opponent's force that he could see. So. That was way too crazy. He also dealt his damage value, even if it was modified to them. So you could like blast their entire team for like five penetrating damage off rip just right away. So Batman is wild. They say the same thing. He is limited a little bit in how much damage he could deal, but you could buff it, you know, enhancement exists. You know, it's, it's kind of insane. And that's along the same lines that they are banning Batman in the Silver Age. I feel the same, although I'm not gonna lie, I did play a little bit of Batman when he came out. He was pretty fun to run like plus 15 celebrity, plus 15 Gotham City or Justice League theme team with like Dr. Fates or something. He was a pretty fun piece to run, but he, he was a little gross. Games were over pretty quick. Wasn't exactly, again, not a fun battle to play. Last, certainly not least, I think this changes the landscape of Silver Age the most. That is, they're banning all ID cards flat out. Previously, they had like Captain America, US Agent, and Lantern banned. Those ID cards just allowed you to uh, take super long turns or completely get rid of barrier. So those ones kind of made sense, but now they're totally shifting the world of silver. Before, silver was kind of modern age with ID cards, maybe a little bit of retail and support figures. Now that they're getting rid of ID cards, Silver Age is gonna feel way more similar to Modern Age than it even was before. So I'm curious to see how much this changes the atmosphere of Silver, obviously completely, because ID cards are insanely good. So we'll have to see going forward. But to me, that's kind of what made Silver Age unique is that it kind of had this Wild West, anything goes, like freaking all ID cards are legal. But we already got to see how that played out during the Worlds Tournament in Silver Age. So now we can kind of see if they reel it back. Less ID cards. We'll see how that goes. WizKid says it did help differentiate from Modern. And in that regard, they were certainly a success. So we kind of agree there. However, ID cards are powerful and put way too much pressure on the shape of any meta they are a part of. So WizKids just thinks they're defining the meta game too much. And they kind of were. All right, we have a handful of erratas. Most of these are all based on theme team probability control, which is obviously no longer a thing. So let's just go ahead and run through them. High Evolutionary, and this is kind of the same for a lot of these guys. I'll bring up a few of the ones that are different, but High Evo and Captain Venom do basically the same thing. They used to give you six uses of theme prob instead of three, but now that there is no more theme prob, they both read independently like this. So if High Evo is on an animal team, he can use probability control, same thing. Captain Venom is on a monster team, he can use probability control. Personally, I wish we could have found a more creative workaround to something like this that made it feel like they were still good. Now, Captain Venom and High Evo, I don't really see the appeal. They kind of just have worse prob nowadays. That's at least what it looks like to me. I wish if maybe it said Captain Venom and one other character on your team have probability control of this game. I think that could have been really strong. 
Maybe it's too strong to give it to like everybody, but maybe one character or something. Anyways, this is just kind of some cleanup. Yelena Belova has very much the same thing. She's just on any theme team she's part of, you get, she gets probability control. Pretty simple. Spy Master, he worked with Spy specifically. There's a second part of his trait that lets him occupy plus one defense and hindering train. But for the most part, it is just if he's on a Spy team, he can use probability control. Now, this is one that I didn't notice at all uh, because I didn't play any Star Trek. But uh, from, I don't even know what Star Trek set this is, but Sela, she's the non-prime version, says... When she uses leadership and succeeds, you may instead choose an opponent can't use theme prob, like for this turn. Now, if she uses leadership and succeeds, they can't use probability control at all during this turn, which is like a really strong buff to a Star Trek figure out of nowhere. So that's actually really cool, since now people are just going to be packing a lot of normal on-dial prob going forward. Some of the coolest changes have to do with equipment. Uh, specifically equipping multiple pieces of equipment that we've started to see that it's easy to equip one piece, but like how the Mandarin rings were, you want to equip two of them, right? And there's kind of weird workarounds to even be able to equip two right now. This just makes it straight up easier. So Mandarin rings, they always had the ability that you could have two equipped, but there's never any text that lets you start the game with two equipped. Like how with the Batman rules, you were allowed to start the game equipped. There's no text that was to start with both of them. They basically gave that to all of the mansion rings that now you can start the game with any two mansion rings equipped, which makes them like some of the best 10 point objects in the game, basically. I mean, poison and shape change was already good for five points. Then you kind of had to find kind of a tough way to equip them a second one. But now that you can just auto equip like Nightbringer for like free smoke cloud and stealth makes you a crazy defensive shell. There's a ton of stuff you can do with mansion rings. So that's, that's a huge buff for them. And they are way cheaper to pick up nowadays than they were in the past. So I would say if you're planning on playing some silver, definitely pick up some of the LE Mandarin rings. And this is probably my favorite change they did. This change is cool. It's thematic. It's awesome. This is the ABPI Ultra Chase Thanos. Now they changed his traits on his card. Although the ability to give him multiple gems was actually from the Ego gem. So I'm really thankful they changed it on Thanos and they didn't update the Ego Gems text, because if they would have just updated Ego Gems text, he would have been able to start the game equipped with all of them. That would make Ego Gem like a 70 point object, basically, that you could give to anyone, except now it's specifically Thanos. So how does it read? Thanos used to, can now start the game with Ego Gem equipped. That was the original trade. Now it is during force construction, Thanos may be assigned the Ego Gem without paying its point cost. And if he's assigned the Ego Gem, he may also be assigned any number of Infinity Gems by paying their point cost. So it does say specifically the ABPI or the Avengers Black Panther and the Illuminati Infinity Gems. So there's six of them. So you can add 70 points to Thanos. This makes him either 170 on his lower line or 230 points on his top line, which is really funny. I think this makes him a contender for like the most comic accurate version of Thanos we've ever had, him and the AF Thanos Avengers Forever. I think it's hilarious. I don't think you ever really need to start with all of them equipped, but it's so thematic, it's so fun, and now this character can finally be played to his fullest very easily. So I absolutely love that change. Probably the biggest thing. All the changes are great. I love all the changes. Maybe not love, but I like them all, and they're really cool and they're really interesting. But the modern age rotation is huge. Usually it happens around July 1st, so right after Nationals historically. This time, they're not going to rotate Modern Age until after Worlds in 2023. They say this is because they want more international players and stuff to be able to use more of their collection, since usually international players do get product quite a ways after us in the US or Canada or Mexico, right? So, rotating everything after Worlds, what does that mean? That means Wonder Woman's legal for Worlds, that means probably up until Rise and Fall is going to be legal for worlds. That means everything's legal, right? So all this stuff we thought was going to totally go away is legal. And there is incredibly strong modern age stuff that is wild to see it get like another worlds. But to be fair, it only ever got one worlds to begin with. So I think this is adding a lot of value to your modern age collection. The fact that it's all going to be legal up until worlds. So I think the, the market's going to change all over the place now that modern age is going to not be until like after September. And there's going to be a rotation. We talked about this on the podcast here coming up this week. I personally think this might mean that there's going to be a super harsh rotation. Like maybe we get rid of Empire, War of the Realms or something 
Maybe nothing too crazy, but I could see that happening since they're waiting so long to do a rotation. And with all of the new rules changes happening in Batman Beyond Amazing and all these future sets, it might be better to make Modern Age a little more concise and flow better and work well with each other. But we'll see. But that's huge. So all your stuff is good until Afterworld. So until September, everything that's Modern Age is going to stay Modern Age. Lastly, and it may not mean a lot to a lot of other people, but it means a lot to me. I really enjoy it. We get to see a sneak peek at an upcoming figure, a sculpt from Avengers 60th. I like it when they add these at the end of an article. It's like a fun little treat. Like, hey, here's all this other cool stuff, but hey, look at that, new hero click. So I'm a big fan. We get to see a sculpt and you're like, who is this clown girl that is yelling at me? That is actually a figure who we've seen several times in hero clicks, but just never in this costume, which really goes with the theme of Avengers 60th being different Avengers and villains throughout their entire time as comic book characters. This is Screaming Mimi, AKA Songbird. So you've probably seen Songbird. She was in Captain America and the Avengers. She was in Mighty Thor. She's in all sorts of sets. Now we have her in her original appearance as Screaming Mimi. She is an unlimited class wrestler. So she's fought like The Thing and Titania and all that stuff in unlimited class wrestling, as well as she's fought Captain America in the Superior Strategium storyline. So I'm a huge fan that we get original Screaming Mimi. Also, if you've ever seen the Superhero Squad TV show, which is hilarious, that's the version of Songbird that's in that show. It's Screaming Mimi. So hopefully she's like a rare or an uncommon and she's easy to pick up. But I think it's a great little thing that WizKids does at the end of the article to show off new and upcoming Heroclix figures. Well, guys, that is the article. There was a ton of stuff we just went over. So let me know what you think about everything I just went over in the comment section below. And make sure to subscribe to Dial H for Heroclix for updated news all the time. Like always, happy trip.